The purpose of this video is to examine the distributions associated with the scores relevant to years of education completed, as well as earnings per day. Now, I could look at earnings on an annual basis, it would, but it would give exactly the same results with respect to skew and kurtosis. So all I did to create these histograms, which is actually review from descriptive statistics, but I do have a point to make that's a little bit newer with respect to estimating a Pearson correlation. So I added the variable education into variables and earnings per day into variables and clicked on charts and then clicked on histograms, clicked on continue and display frequency tables I unchecked. Click on statistics and if you want the basic descriptives you can look at mean standard deviation but the two key variables here with respect to evaluating the distributions of scores include skewness and kurtosis. Click continue and click OK. So here are the distributions associated with the scores. Now these are what SPSS produces automatically. I clean them up to make them look better and I'll just quickly show you what I did to make them look a little bit prettier. I got rid of this box here. It's not always easy to get rid of it. There you go. And then I got rid of that. And then I double clicked and I got rid of a fill and I got rid of the border. Anyway, this video isn't about making a pretty histogram. This is basically what I did. I did a bit more work than that. But we can see that the distribution is really very normal. It looks like it's got a big spike over here, which would suggest that maybe there's some kurtosis associated with the data. But we can see that education had skewness of 0.221, which is very close to zero. And the kurtosis is 0.126. Again, there's very little kurtosis associated with these data. Now, I do want to point out that you wouldn't estimate in this context, and this is the key point of the video, you wouldn't calculate the confidence intervals or the t-ratio associated with skew to evaluate whether it's sufficiently normal for the purposes of conducting a Pearson correlation analysis. What I mean by that is I can divide the skew estimate of 0.221 and divide it by the standard error. And in this case, it comes out with a value of 0.59 which is not even close to a value of 1.96, which we might expect when the null hypothesis is about to be rejected. So in this case, the skewness divided by the standard error of skewness is irrelevant because I recommend in the textbook that you use a skew of about 2.0 as the maximum comfort zone for you to perform a Pearson chi-square analysis. And then with kurtosis, it's an absolute value of 9 that I recommend as sufficiently normal for the purposes of conducting a Pearson correlation analysis. So here's earnings per day. Earnings per day are more substantially skewed, as you'd expect. Now let me just get rid of these pieces of information here that, in my opinion, don't make things look any better. And so here's earnings per day. And you can see there's a real clear positive skew here. If I double click on this and get the distribution, there'll be a bit of a positive skew sloping this way. And that is consistent with reality. We expect data associated with earnings to be positively skewed because there are some people who earn a substantially larger amount of money relative to others, and it pulls the tail outward. Now, this skew in terms of estimate is 0.91, which is near 1.0. And 1.0 is a fair amount of skew, but not sufficiently large that the p-value associated with the Pearson correlation would be you know, sufficiently inaccurate that I would be worried. And again, the kurtosis is very low, 0.072 associated with earnings per day. So to recap, skewness in these data is pretty high for education, but not sufficiently high to go beyond the absolute 2.0 rule that I use, which is based on simulation research to suggest that the Pearson correlation is pretty robust up to that point. And kurtosis was non a non-issue entirely because in that case, we can expect kurtosis to be as big as 9 before we seriously start to worry about the p-value that would be derived from an analysis from those data. So those, that's a recap and summary of an evaluation of the distributions associated with education and earnings. And I hope you found that useful because so many people do end up dividing the skew by the standard error of skew and finding a significant effect. And they get worried about doing a Pearson correlation when they probably shouldn't.